And when you think about the word of God and when you think about what it actually means for you and I to be born again, I, can, I don't know everybody's um, story. I only know my own story. But a lot of times we were told that we needed to be born again so we wouldn't go to hell. So there wasn't a conviction that I needed to be born again, which is different. I was born again out of fear. I didn't want to go to hell. Or um, the church that I was in, I went to, my mother was there and her mother was there. And you know, my family was there, my siblings were there. And so I just joined and I just began to say I was born again. But I really didn't bear the fruit of it. Everything in God's word bears fruit. Yes. If there is no fruit, then there is no born again experience. If the word tells me things that I should do and I don't do it, and I have a pattern of that, I am not born again. Now that's a lot for a lot of people because um, that means you have to really allow the Holy Spirit to examine you. But you know, when you are truly born again, it is a surrendered life. <coughs> I surrender my will. I surrender my emotions. I surrender my life. I can't say today or tomorrow which way I'm going to go. The wind blows, but it blows, and I don't know which way the wind is blowing. It doesn't mean that I have my own will. That's a part of the surrender. It doesn't mean that I control my life. That is part of the surrender. It doesn't mean that I am going to do what I want to do because I feel that's what I want to do. That is not part of the surrender. And I really think about it, and this is a hard message because I think I've thought about it and I, I've known um, other, you know, other ministers, we think about this because we have congregations and we want everybody to be saved that is in our congregations. But we do know that there's some people that have gone through the motions and that are really not truly really saved. But you can say, I have a, a relationship with God. Do you? Because you can't have a real relationship with God and do your own will. It doesn't work like that. There's a surrender of everything that I have that if God requires it of me, I'm not going to question it and say, this you got is this the devil's just you got it. I'm going to know his voice. Knowing that still small voice of his voice speaking to me, I'm going to know it. And you know, this is this is this is a this is a hard thing to, to admit because when you think about dealing with anger and rage, those are not the characteristics of a born again believer. And especially if you've been born again over a couple of years. Anger and rage is not the characteristics. So something in me is still angry and needs to be dealt with, but I haven't surrendered my life to the Lord so he can't deal with it. He can only deal with what you surrender. He's not, remember, we all are free agents. He gave us all a will. He doesn't control us. Who controls you is the devil. That's who controls us. So if I'm still dabbling in sins, if I'm still going back and forth from sin to sin, and I'm not talking about little things you missed it. I'm talking about you have the same characteristics as you did before salvation. There's an issue there. There's a problem there. You may not be born again. If there's no change, and anger, when you think about anger and rage, and you think about how destructive even the mere thought of it is, because it's destroying your body, 
and you are dealing with sicknesses, you're de dealing with diseases, you're, de you're, you're, you're dealing with um, um, a lot of um, unknown things that are going on in your body and in your mind because of this anger and rage that you've stuffed and you call it something else. Well, nobody's gonna talk to me this way. Nobody's gonna act like this to me. Nobody's gonna tell me this. Think, think about this, God can't even get to you. He can't even, with his still, small voice, speak to you because there's too much going on inside of you where he can't break through. And when he is trying to get to you, we stuff it with many other things, or we just kind of take the thought and, put, and push it away. So anger, the definition, as I brought forth last Sunday, is a strong feeling or annoyance of displeasure or hostility. Rage is violent, uncontrollable anger, an instance of aggressive behavior or violent anger caused by a stressful or frustrating situation is dark rage. What is the main cause of anger? Now the word of God tells us be angry and sin not. Well, how can I be angry and not sin? Because if I get angry, the sin is going to be there the next thing. The anger comes and the next thing is, is I'm going to sin. Because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be so angry at all the thoughts. I may not voice those thoughts out of my mouth, but the thoughts themselves are speaking inside of me. What is the main cause of anger? There are many common triggers for anger. Losing your patience. Feeling as if your opinion or efforts aren't appreciated. And injustice. Well, we've all had that. Other causes of anger include memories or traumatic or enraging events and worrying about my personal problems. What does the Bible say about take his yoke? Give him yours. We think best that we can handle our own problems, so we don't even come to him with them. We just sit there and we will binge watch something all night long because we're trying to numb the pain of the anger and the rage. In James 1, 19 and 20, it says, Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. <coughs> Anger is not a sin. It is what you do with it that becomes the sin. Because he says be angry and sin not. The Bible says when angry, do not sin. Do not ever let your wrath, your exasperation, your fury, your indignation lasts until the sun goes down. In other words, I have a, a period of time to deal with that. And I can't mentally ascend and say I dealt with that and the next day it's still raging. I didn't deal with it. I didn't release it. I didn't surrender it. So if we understand what really being born again is, you realize the moment that you are born again, old things are passed away. Behold, all has become new. So my old nature, how I respond to situations, 
and circumstances and tragedies that come into my life. And these are just stepping stones of testing you to make sure that you are qualified yes. to walk yes. into the kingdom of God and fulfill his plan. Yes. And if you can't pass those, you are not, you are <coughs> disqualified. Yes. That's a bad word. People don't like that word. No. Been challenged about that word. God doesn't disqualify anybody. I said to somebody, I said, no, you disqualify yourself. So when you think about the Bible says, when angry, do not sin. Anger can control the life. Anger can cause you to say some things and do some things that you didn't think you would do or say. Anger can have you respond in certain ways that you never thought you would respond in that way. But you have to go further than that and you have to get to the root of why does this bother me? Yeah. Why, and be yeah. honest, I, and I do have it. It's like I shared my testimony. I have another one too. I have another one. I'll wait till she turns off the 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 the, the, the um the video because I don't want that on the air. But we're all and I and I'm sure about my because my life is open. I don't mind telling you about it. Because I hope you grow from it. When angry, do not sin. Do not ever let your wrath go to that place where after it's gone there, you have beat yourself up. Yeah. We all been there? Yeah. Can I have a show of hands? Oh, yeah. We've all been there. When we are truly, truly born again, these are characteristics that I'm not saying that this is something you do, it happens once or once, twice, or, or, or three. You know, I mean, it's not a regular thing. But for some people, it's a regular thing. And when it's a regular thing, you've got, you have not been born again because when you are, when you ask Jesus, let me just tell you this. When you ask Jesus to come into your heart, not somebody drug you to the altar, and, and said, well, if you, don't, if you don't get saved, you're going to hell. And so you get saved because you're afraid to go to hell. A fear of salvation isn't salvation. That's just fear forcing you to do something. But when you really in your heart are convicted, it's a difference now, convicted of your feelings, your emotions, your life, how you lived, what you've done, you're convicted. <clears throat> and someone says to you, I see the condition, I have an answer for you. When you receive Jesus as your Lord and your Savior, he takes your sin and gives you his life. At that point in time, if you receive it and you surrender, he comes in and begins to live inside of you. It's not you that live, it's Christ that lives inside of you. And then everything about you changes. The love of God that is shed abroad in your heart by the Holy Spirit comes in. And you're convicted when you have a wrong thought. You're convicted if you have a wrong attitude. You're convicted about a lot of things. You change. You're not, I'm not the same person that I was before salvation. I'm so totally not that same person because I had a transformation. There should be a transformation. I don't think like I used to think. I 
think, I believe with the mind of Christ. There was times prior to salvation, you said something to me, I had lines that I had drawn. Don't cross the line. If you cross the line, I'm going to jump on you. And to look at me now, you would not think that, but I would fight you in a minute. Now, there was a, an occasion that my son can testify to one of those, because I wouldn't drug him to help me fight. I'm not that person. I love you to life, but I'm not going to fight. Now, I'm not saying that if you hit me that I'm completely sanctified enough to turn down the cheek. I'm just going to tell you the truth. Uh, I don't know. But I'd like to think that with the power of God in me, I would turn the other cheek. Now, don't get the other cheek now. Because now you pushed it. But there is, there is fruit. When you are really born again, you have sur surrender. You know what surrender is? Surrender means that I don't even know what I'm going to do tomorrow. Surrender no, is that I have to ask the Lord, should I? Surrender is I don't get myself involved in other people's problems. I'll give counsel. You take it, great. You don't, that's on you. Surrender is that the will of God is the far most in front the the most in front of my mind and that surrender to him is that whatever you say and that was my confession I'll do wherever you lead me I'll go and it, it's not who's going to go with me I can go by myself did that for years I'm not one that has to have a crowd I just want to follow him and, 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 and develop the kings that he's given me. Yes. I want to see the kings come forth. And to, to be born again, think about it, just the, just the terminology of being born again means that I can't go back in my mother's womb and so I want you to go with me to John's Gospel, chapter 3. And I'm going to read it out of the Passion. And it reads this way. Now there was a prominent religious leader. Sometimes we are religious leaders. Okay? So I'm going to bring this down to our own backyard. Now there was a prominent religious leader among the Jews named Nicodemus who was part of the sect called the Pharisees. One night he discreetly came to Jesus and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God for no one performs the miracle signs that you do unless God's power is with him. Jesus answered Nicodemus, listen to this eternal truth. Before a person can even perceive God's kingdom, now this is big, before a person can even perceive God's kingdom they must first experience a rebirth. <coughs> They'll be over with the feather. Not keep their life as it was and add Jesus to the back of it. No, all of that has to go away. What was is no longer. I mean, I'm, I'm being rebirthed. Okay, so. Before a person can even perceive God's kingdom, they must first experience a rebirth. Nicodemus said, rebirth? How can a gray-headed man be reborn? 
How can a gray-headed man be reborn? It's impossible for anyone to go back into the womb a second time and be reborn. Jesus answered, I speak an eternal truth. Unless you are born of water and the spirit, you are, you are, unless you, wait a minute, I speak an eternal truth. Unless you are born of water and the spirit, you will never enter God's kingdom. For the natural realm, I love this, for the natural realm only gives birth to things that are natural. Makes sense, doesn't it? But the spiritual realm gives birth to supernatural life. Whoa. Revelation. So we've been trying to be born again in the natural realm with natural thoughts of what it looks like, natural thoughts and responses, You shouldn't be amazed by my statement. You all must be born from above. Mm. So the experience of being rebirthed is from the realm of the spirit, not from the realm of the natural. So we just said and 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 answered an altar call and raised our hand and said, okay, I want to be saved. And the minister said, so repeat after me. And we repeated after them. And then he said, you're saved. And we just went out, no more knowledge, living our life, da -da 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 -da. doing our thing, still smoking our cigarettes, still smoking our marijuana, still cussing, still doing all these things. We just went back, cussing up a breeze, anger, rage, Oh, yeah, gossip. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we just went on. We're born again. Yeah, anybody born again? Everybody raises their hand. You're not born again. Mm 